his mouth like a piece of old leather. Not long now, Sammy, he said encouragingly. By the time they reached Werewold, he was carrying both Will and Sammy in his arms. He trampled over the old cobble streets as twilight fell, on through the square, past the clothes shops and towards the blacksmiths. He knocked firmly at his door. A window opened from above. Mr. Oakley, cried the brawny, dark-haired man. You's back from London? Mrs. Stoker, the blacksmith's wife, appeared at his side. Has you really been to London? she asked in awe. He nodded. You look fair done for her. And she disappeared and reappeared at the front door. You must be starving, she said. I'll make you a meal. That's very kind, Mrs. Stoker, but I want to start out for little weir old soon, he replied. Put the boy by the fire, she said. Tom placed him in an armchair by the hearth. Mr. Stoker eased the armchair nearer and pushed back the overcoat to allow the warmth of the flames to reach his limbs. As he did so, he let out a gasp. Mrs. Stoker turned to look at him. Oh, my love, she said. He's in a bad way. Good job you went for him, Mr. Oakley. By now, the news has spread fast about his journey to London. Well, you keeps that to yourself, mine, said Tom. The Stokers decided not to ask any more questions. What you don't know, you can't tell on, and that was that. After a rest and some tea, Mrs. Stoker lent him some blankets for Will and gave him a bag filled with sandwiches. It was dark by the time Dobbs was harnessed for the journey. Tom tucked Will up with Sammy in the cart and clambered up to his seat to take hold of the reins. Come on, me old gal, he yelled in delight as Dobbs jogged forward. Take us home. Will awoke to the sound of Tom singing. He opened his eyes to discover a starry sky above him. Sammy was slumped in an exhausted stupor by his feet. He pushed aside a few of the blankets and looked up to where Tom was sitting. He struggled to his knees, but his legs were too wobbly and he sank back into the pile of blankets. Mr. Tom, he croaked. Mr. Tom. Tom stopped the cart and turned around. Woken up, eh? Will blinked his eyes until Tom came clearly into focus. You went dreaming. Lie back, boy. We went long from home. And he tucked the blankets round him again. But, stammered Will, how, how did I get here? Tom shook the reins and Dobbs moved forward. I kidnapped you, he said over his shoulder, and then he suddenly realised the enormity of what he had done and he burst into laughter. Yes, that's what I done, boy. I kidnapped you. Will lay back and fell asleep. He next woke to find himself being carried through the little's front door and into their sitting room with its large array of books and cosy armchairs. Tom put him down on the sofa by the fire and Mrs Little called her husband. Dr Little leaned over Will and with the gentlest of hands pushed his balaclava back and examined him. You seem pretty well patched up, Will. Mrs Little gave him some hot milk and toast but he fell into another deep sleep before he had even attempted to touch it. The Littles listened to Tom's story. I know I done wrong, said Tom, but I couldn't let him be taken to a home. Country air, put in Mrs Little, familiar surroundings, people who love him, best thing for him. Her husband looked over at her. Her husband looked at her over his ever sliding spectacles. They're bound to track him down sooner or later. Nonsense, ex expostulated Mrs Little huskily. They're too busy to go chasing evacuees. They didn't even know he'd returned to London. Dr Little turned to face Tom. The sores will heal, they healed before. It's the wounds inside that will take the longest to heal. I know that, said Tom. I'll give him me support when he needs. Me too, cried a, gro cried a voice behind him. They turned to find Zack standing at the doorway in his pyjamas. He ran across to the sofa and looked down at Will's inert body. I knew you'd bring him back, he said fiercely, tears in his eyes. You look tired, Tom, said Mrs Little. Sit down. Tom thanked her and sank gratefully into an armchair. Zack continued to gaze silently at Will. Mr Tom, said Zack earnestly, if you need any help. But it was useless continuing. Tom was asleep. Wow. 
What an amazing chapter. Lots happening there. Right, so chapter 18 is called, and I'll read that to you next time, Recovery. Okay, so speak to you soon. Bye.